Thank you very much. It's, it's a deep honor for me to be inducted into the American Academy of Political and Social Science, uh, especially after uh, hearing about the other four fellows. Um, and in particular, it's a great honor to be named the Walter Lippmann Fellow. Walter Lippmann was a consistent advocate of bringing rigorous scholarship to bear on contemporary politics, social problems, and policymaking. He advocated fiercely for the public role of intellectuals and also practiced it through his incisive journalism. Although Walter Lippmann was often skeptical of the public and wrote very trenchantly and sometimes scathingly about the risks of public opinion and the perils of unfettered democracy, uh, uh, Lippmann never flagged in using his writerly skills and brilliant mind to reach the widest possible audience, Distil distilling scholarship really in a fox-like way, uh, in prose that was accessible, that rendered the complex intelligible. Lippmann and I would have surely argued a lot about politics and about much more had we been contemporaries. But I am certain that for all of our differences, Lippmann would have admired scholars like many of you in this room tonight who eschew hyper-specialization and obscur obscure scholarly jargon in our efforts to bring our own rigorous research to bear on our society today. In my own scholarship and in my engagement with modern America, I've tried to write in the spirit of Lippmann, drawing no bright line between scholarship and policymaking, no bright line between empirical research and advocacy. To understand the past and present was and is indispensable to fashioning a good and just society. That said, I have chosen for most of my scholarly projects um, un-Lipmanian topics, if I can coin the phrase Lipmanian. Uh, that is, uh, topics uh, that Lippmann wasn't particularly interested in his career, particularly racial inequality. Lippmann did write about racial inequality, and he was open to racial, uh, 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 he was open on racial issues, including advocating for the admission of W.E.B. Du Bois to uh, the then important liberal society. He failed at that time. But civil rights and racial equality were not central to his agenda as a journalist or advocate. I've written about the role of public policies in both undermining and exacerbating racial injustices in the United States historically and in the present. Along the way, I've been motivated by the need to challenge conventional historical wisdom, particularly about the ways that we talk and think about race and racial inequality in the United States. Nearly every major scholar of civil rights in the United States, at least at one point or another, recalls the great aphorism the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice. This stirring statement, first uttered by the great abolitionist Theodore Parker, made famous by Martin Luther King Jr., encapsulates an enduring theme in American culture. A deep faith in progress, a teleological view of history, the notion that we are on a path toward perfection that we can overcome. The sense that history's arc bends towards justice fueled some of America's great transformative social movements, the struggle against slavery, the struggle for women's suffrage, the struggle for racial equality, and the struggle for the marginal and dispossessed, particularly immigrants, for full citizenship. This statement is once a statement of aspiration, spoken hopefully by people like Parker and King, who knew that the arc of the moral universe did not bend by itself, but rather uh, was bent by social movements, by activists, by intellectuals, by academics, committed to making the United States a more just place. But this aphorism, if considered too simply, um, is a basis for delusion or self-congratulation. Not we shall overcome, but rather we have overcome. In my work, I take measure of the gains, hard won, that resulted from the mass mobilization of African Americans in the United States. It goes without saying today that our racial discourse is more uh, civil, even with the excesses of the current campaign borne in mind. Americans today value diversity and welcome once stigmatized racial minorities into the nation's educational and economic elites. But we struggle with uh, deep, persistent gaps especially between African Americans and whites that remain unaddressed from the civil rights era. In looking out at this question of the arc of the moral universe, 
in thinking about what's changed and what's not changed, in thinking about the extraordinary advances of the last 50 years, we also have to remember the ways in which the history of the 20th century and the early 21st bears heavily on the present. It bears on the persistence of residential segregation by race in America's housing markets, even though the measures have improved, particularly since 1990. It bears on the persistently high unemployment rates of African Americans, who since the 1950s, in good times and bad, have had unemployment rates about twice that of white Americans. It bears on the a way in which the subprime mortgage and foreclosure crisis fell most heavily on African Americans uh, in uh, the period beginning in 2006. It bears especially on the enormous disparities in our public education system in the United States. Have we overcome? The historic presidency of Barack Obama offers one answer, but the events in Ferguson, Baltimore, and Chicago offer another. We still live in a profoundly unequal society. We live in a place where our resources are distributed, particularly across metropolitan spaces, unequally. We live in a place where the distribution of public goods and economic resources and the amount that we pay for those public goods in the form of taxes are inequitable. We need to recognize that just as often as the arc of history bends uh, uh, in a positive direction, it often veers off course. To veer that arc of justice back on course means recognizing what has changed uh, since the civil rights era, but just in, as importantly, recognizing what has not. Thank you again for this honor. It's really great.